God of heaven and earth, we thank you for tonight. We bless your name for your word. Because the entrance of your word gives life. And it is the spirit that gives it life. The flesh profited nothing. We ask that tonight by your spirit, mixed with your word, you will give us life in the name of Jesus. Life into our ministries in the name of Jesus. Every gap in our capacity. Father, bridge it from tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. And let your name alone be glorified. Thank you because you have heard our prayers. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Oh, put your hands together for the Lord as you take your seat majestically. Sit majestically. Building capacity for relevance. That's my topic. This is one instance in the Bible. That story in First Samuel chapter 16. Where capacity and competence is placed above every other thing. Provide me now a man who can play well and bring him to me. And the first thing they said, we have found the son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, who is cunning in playing. He can play well. They stated some other things, a, man, a mighty man of valor, and they concluded by saying, and the Lord is with him. I remember that in those days, when we are looking for people with capacity when you want to start a business i remember one year i went to represent our father in the lord reverend lamidi in adequele to minister he's been invited and he had followed at the geo about from be somewhere and he said i should go and i went there and i remember one of our highly placed brothers coming to adequele church to come and ask for people he wanted to recruit because it was believed then that it's in the church that you can find faithful people. I still believe that we are going back there in Jesus' name. So, the first thing you look for is somebody who has the fear of God. Before you start looking for capacity. But you see, in this scripture, it was turned the other way around. Provide me now a man who can play well the emphasis in that scripture is on competence and capacity who can play well cunning in playing our second text from matthew 17 14 to 21 in verse 15 say lord have mercy on my son for he is lunatic and in verse 16 the man expressed his disappointment and I brought him to your disciples. And they could not kill him. So many things you wish you could have been able to do. And you cannot. There is nothing as frustrating as knowing what to do. And not having the capacity to do it. It's very frustrating and disappointing. We brought him to your disciples. And they could not kill him. And Jesus rebuked the devil. And he departed. And the child was cured. From that very hour. Then came the disciples to him and asked him, Why could not we cast him out? And my answer, capacity. Is the capacity. Verse 28. And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, number one, that they needed to breach. Secondly, 21, this kind does not go out but by prayer and fasting all boiled down to capacity problem capacity competency shortfalls identified by jesus christ among the disciples unbelief and spiritual exercises of praying and fasting a lot of people want to do what jesus did but they don't want to pray the price that was paid they see great men of God, great servants of God demonstrate some level of superior power, some level of anointing, some level of grace, and they covet it. Like the future say, we should covet endlessly the best gifts. But over and over again, they have found out that they are not meeting up. The answer is just capacity. 
In Proverbs chapter 24 verse 10, the Bible says, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Adversity is not the problem. The challenge is not the problem. Every ministry must face a challenge. But if you have the capacity to handle it, it your trial will be turned to testimonies. Your test will be turned to testimony. So capacity is the problem. No wonder Paul the Apostle said in Philippians chapter 3 verse 10 that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. It's a process. Capacity building is a process. Every product is a function of a process. It's not an event. It's a process. Capacity building. What is capacity? Capacity is the sum total of your spiritual, your mental, your emotional, or your physical ability of becoming all that God has ordained you to be. I read the story of a man, a professor of music, who was very aged. He was already close to 90. And one day he slept and he had a vision and he saw somebody playing the keyboard and the person was playing it so well much better than him and he woke up from the dream and started asking God who was that and the Lord said you are the one that is where I wanted you to end but it's a pity you have not gotten there and your time is up every one of us God has a destination for us he has the level of capacity he expects us to build up to. And I pray you will not miss your own in the mighty name of Jesus. Relevance, on the other hand, is to relate an appropriate way and I believe at an appropriate time. The focus of my message tonight will be to give an idea of what to expect in the course of this conference. Tonight, I will just split this message into two parts. One, building capacity. And two, remaining relevant. Those are just the two parts I'm going to discuss tonight. Building capacity. It is sharpening capacity which has been defined as your spiritual, your mental, your emotional, and your physical ability of becoming everything you are capable of becoming with relevant skills and capabilities in Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 10 if the axe is dull and is edge unsharpened more strength is needed but skill will bring success Ecclesiastes 10 10 skill has to do with strategies engaged in, in performing a particular assignment not just raw talent it takes training such as we are having now and personal development to convert your raw talent, your raw gift given you by the Holy Ghost to convert it into skills and expertise so that you are able to play well. You need training. You need personal development. And that's what we mean by building capacity. It takes training such as we have now. I've told this story before. The Zambian national team in 1993 lost the entire team to plane crash. Except one man. Who flew to where they were going to play? I think it was Senegal. All the entire team perished. And they had a tournament early 1994, the African Cup of Nations. When the money period was over, after money, the entire team, including reserve bench, everybody perished. When the entire money period was over, the nation took a decision that to honor this man, we must win the African Cup of Nations. Then you ask me, how do they intend to win it when they have lost their entire team? What they did, they came and took Justin Fashan of Nigeria as a coach. And they went into the nooks and crannies of Zambia, recruiting boys who are playing ball with their foot. Recruiting raw talents 
Those who used to play in Onola, I don't know how many of you know Onola in Lagos, where they would dribble and dribble and dribble and dribble, they would dribble, and when they get to the goalpost, they would go back again and go and be dribbling again. Say, you are supposed to score. But because they are village boys, they don't know the importance of goals. They just want to dribble and join themselves. So they put this team together, and for your information, this ragtag team, you will call them. They are not professionals, they are not experts. They just had good training and exposure to skills. This team not only played in the quarterfinal and won, they played in the semifinal and won. And Nigeria did like this before they beat them 2 1 in the final with all our professionals. That is to show you that raw talent is raw talent, but skill. An expertise is a different ball game. If you want skill and expertise, you cannot afford not to be trained. And there's a maxim in Christian education. They say, if you do not train them, do not blame them. In Genesis chapter 14, verse 14, see what happened. And when Abraham heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed is trained servants born in his house 318 of them and pursued them unto Dan for your information this team 318 trained by Abraham in his house they pursued these people and they overtook them and they defeated them and recovered a lot that is to show you the importance of training just because they were trained they were armed and they were trained in Abraham's house. They were not soldiers. They were not military men. They were just house boys in his house. Who he just gave some training. And he had them. And they pursued. They overtook. And they recovered lot and everything that was taken. I pray that after this training, whatever you have lost in ministry, you will recover them in the name of Jesus Christ. I say you are going to recover them in the name of Jesus Christ. Training just like this is important to turn our raw talents and gifts to skills through capacity building. In order to serve the Lord and his bride, the church, well, we must go beyond the 20 scriptural character qualification or character qualities that were enunciated in 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 1 to 13 and Titus 1, 6 to 9. We need more than that. Because in that place, we were told about the character qualities. And we were told about only one skill. The skill of apt to teach. We need other form of skills. And I'm going to enumerate them tonight. And I believe in the course of this training. Other people will come and dwell heavily on them. Number one. For you to be a good minister of the gospel and a good leader in this age and time, you need personal, personal management skill. You need personal management skills. Pastors must manage their spiritual, their emotional, and their physical needs. They must manage their lives, their homes, and their affairs. Before leading others. A servant of the law. Must not strive. The day I saw it in the Bible. I said. So there is something like this in the Bible. And here you see some pastors. They will remove their shirt. You say today. Today is today. We must, we must log it out. I remember going to bob my hair one day. And I went with my wife. And there were these young boys who were driving rough. And they splashed water on me. And my said, Mama, we ran after their car. Of course, they stopped. As if they were looking for somebody to fight. So the moment they stopped, mm, me, I just ran. I went behind one electric pole and I hid there. Then they came and started harassing my wife. I was looking at them. Then the entire street rose up and said, Touch that woman today. Touch her. And see what we are going to do to you. When I saw that the whole crowd had gathered around them, I now came out. And when I came out, they said, hey, this is the man. They said, touch, touch, touch any of them. 
touch any of them. And the event, you know, dissipated. Everything went away. And we went to where we were going. And they too drove off. The following day, it was inside darkness. The following day, as I got to church, one of my members met me and said, Pastor, Pastor we saw you last night. I said to myself, I said, supposing I had fought. That's how they will have come and told the whole church, our pastor, yesterday, it was only God, though. It was only God. We helped pastor. Pastor did not agree. Oh. A servant of the Lord must not fight. That's not to say that there won't be things that will irritate you. But you must exercise self-control. That's what we mean by personal management. Manage your emotion. Manage your abos. Manage yourself. Manage your household. In 1 Corinthians 9.27, Paul said, But I keep under my body and put it in subjection, lest after preaching to others, I myself will be a castaway. You will not be a castaway in the name of Jesus Christ. You must learn to manage yourself. Manage yourself. Manage your time. Manage your emotion. Even when people irritate you. Remember that was what made Moses to lose the promised land. Moses had no fault. Those people were terrible. They were terrible. They angered him. But you know Moses also had a problem with anger before. So it was a case of petrol meeting fire. And then there will be a spark. They, Can we bring water out for you? You rebels. And God will not pardon him for that. Number two. You need interpersonal and relational skills as a pastor and a leader you must understand others and how to relate with them very important we are not all the same somebody was talking to me one day and he said orishi rishi omoni bababi that's how our God has them in different times. So you as a leader, you are expected to know how to relate with people. Indeed, it's been found out that technical skills and knowledge, like your Bible knowledge and stuff, is only 15% of job performance. 85% has to do with how you relate with people. In 1 Kings chapter 12 verse 7 My favorite verse of scripture And they spoke to him saying If you Will be a servant To these people today And will serve them And speak good words to them You will answer them And speak good words to them Then they will be your servant How long? How long will they be your servant? But you must first of all serve them today you must be a servant to them today you must serve them you must answer them thank god for four square you saw today during the nmc you asked to answer answer them yet there are pastors who don't want to answer anybody they are gapatapata Say, I, I receive it from God. Nobody can challenge it. Answer them. Speak good words to them. Then they will be your servants forever. There are certain things that people need that have been identified as needs of people. So that when you relate with them, if you have knowledge of these things, if you use it, it's going to help your ministry a lot. Number one. People want to be considered important. Because people who be little people will themselves become little people with time. People want to be considered important. So no matter who they are, no matter their level in the society, whether they are high, middle class, or low, when they come to church, they want to be considered to be important. Because every soul is the same before God. So people want to be considered important. If you believe two people as a pastor, 
very soon you become a little people yourself because people will not associate with your church number two people like to be hard they want to be hard no matter how stupid what they are saying is and that's why i like four square when we say general everybody raise hand today you see how many people came out it, you know, nobody asks what do you want to say let me hear it first whether it will make sense did we do that so and i'm sure not everything they said today made sense but they had opportunity to express themselves help, help me clap for four square People want to be heard. Whether what they are saying makes sense or not, you must give them opportunity to express themselves. In your church, you must encourage interaction. That's why some of the side groups that we have for follow-up and discipleship, they are very important. And that's where people can express themselves. You don't just keep on loading people, loading people, loading. Hear them out. Know where they are. People want to be appreciated. It is better to say you can do better than that than to say what have you done. You can say a cup is half full and you can also say it's half empty. Which one do you think is better? Half full. If you say the cup is half full, the man is encouraged. So I've done half. I can improve on it. But when you say this cup is half empty, it means you have written off whatever the man has done. People want to be encouraged. People want to be appreciated. Some people will ask. When you tell them to appreciate people in the church, they say, so who will appreciate me now? Eh? All of us are working for God. But you are a leader. You are a leader. You need to appreciate your people. You need to encourage them. People want to be encouraged. People want to be empathized with. If they are in a difficult situation, you need to empathize with them. So, as a pastor, as a ministry head, you must have interpersonal and relational skills with the people that you deal with in your church or in your department. Number three, you need to have motivational or vision casting skills. This is very important. Even God had to engage Abraham along this line. Genesis chapter 13 verse 14 to 15. God brought Abraham out and he tried to cast a vision before Abraham. He said, Abraham, look now from the place where you are. Look northward, look southward, look eastward, look westward. For as long as your eyes can see, I have given to you. That's vision. God was trying to cast a vision for Abraham to catch. And thank God Abraham caught the vision. It is your responsibility as a leader. To cast the vision before your people. So I'm sure in the course of this conference, you'll be taught how to cast vision. Because for all you know, people don't follow a leader, people follow vision. It's not a leader they follow per se, they follow vision. So if you have no vision, like the Bible says, where there is no vision, the people perish. And just like where there is no vision, the people perish, where there are no people, the vision also perish. So you must learn how to cast vision so that people can follow the vision and therefore follow you who is the one that casted the vision. Number four, you need team building skills. As a pastor, as a leader of a team, you need team building skills. I came across a young man, one of the sons of my leaders, and he went outside this country to go and read in one of the North American countries. And I went to that country on holiday and I saw him. And I said, the parents asked me to see him. And I asked him, I said, how well are you doing? He said, Pastor, be thanking God for me. Oh. I said, why? He said, they gave us a team building assignment to do. He said, and because i'm not using i'm not used to working with teams i'm a lone ranger i like working alone he said so in the team i was the only one giving them problem anything anybody does i must criticize the person 
to the extent that I started fighting everybody in the team. And they reported me to the authorities. And the authorities said, last warning. If you do that again, we'll deport you. He said he didn't know it's as serious as that. That the essence of that project is to make you to work together in a team. To learn how to work together in a team. Jesus, the master himself, chose 12 disciples. Why do you think he chose 12 disciples? It's because the gospel must be done, must be preached by a team. Even when he was sending them out, he sent them two by two, two of us. Two by two. So, in the church, the spirit of only me, only me, only me, is not in line with ministry. You must learn to work with people. And for you, to have a successful ministry. Listen to me. If you have a church you are pastoring. There are these teams that are very essential. You must have prayer support teams. Because church growth is 60% prayer and 40% method. You must have worship service teams. You must have evangelism and active follow up teams. You must have Christian education teams. Did you see me talk about only one person doing this job? No. It's a team. And that's where you can get the best result. But you must learn team building skills. How people can work together in a team. And you should be an example. You shouldn't be the one, you know, segregating your people. Either by tribe or by language. Or segregating them on the basis of, I know this one before, I don't know this one. Segregating them on any ground at all. You must be the one that will bring them together. That's why when they were going to anoint David for the, for the third time, the people said, the Bible said, then all Israel came together to make David a king. And when they were going to confess, they said, it is you that we know. Because even when Saul was king, you were the one relating with us. You were the one bringing us together. So it is time to make you a king. A leader must be a rallying point, not a divisive point. A leader must rally people together so that there can be team building. A leader shouldn't be a divisive point that these ones are my friend, these ones are not my friend. As a leader, everybody in your team should be your friend. True of us. I say true of us. I'm spoiling some people's theology tonight. Because anywhere they go, they say, I want batty, batty, more. this batty, batty people. Or this yummy, what do you have to do with yummy? There's no No such things in the church of God Christ died for all There's only one church And the first revival In Acts of the Apostles It was tribalism And divisiveness That would have truncated that revival So the church had to rise To checkmate it Because Psalm 133 From verse 1 to 3 Say how good and how pleasant is it For brethren to dwell together in unity And say for there The Lord commanded blessing Even life evermore The Holy Ghost would not have come If the church was not united The Bible says And they all came together in one place And suddenly There was a rushing mighty wind Because they were united I pray that the unity that will bring the end time revival we will have it in the church in the name of Jesus Christ. So team building. So important. You must have team building skills. And then number five. You must have theological skills. I've said it again and again. Particularly in this part. Our part. part it's only pastors. That do not require training. Even drivers. For you to hire somebody as a driver, FRSC, they will ask for driving license. But today you see so many people, they open shop. Once there's a bear and there's a keyboard, pastor has come. And this year is pastor. By the time you meet him next year, maybe he starts with 10, 10 people. The moment they become 30, it's an apostle. And next year, it's senior apostle. And by the time you see him in three years time, 
It's an archbishop. Meanwhile, the whole congregation, they are not up to 50 yet. You need to be trained. Don't behave like me. When I came into Four Square, I used to have opportunity to minister in the church. And people used to get blessed. Because I was under the church as a youth copper at the age of about 23, 24. So I thought I don't need any form of training. So when I come and I miss that, people are blessed. So one day, one of our founding fathers called me to the office. And he said, Sam, you are doing very well. But you need to go to life. I told daddy, I said, life, what will I learn in life? I think I've known everything. And he laughed. I didn't know he kept it in his heart. When the register of life was roasted to our church on exchange of pulpit, Papa called me to the office and said, meet the register of life theological seminary. He said, registrar, please, this my son is very competent. Very competent as a pastor. Can you please issue him a life certificate to satisfy him that he's already licensed. And I will now and he look at daddy and say, Baba, that's not how you trained us all. You didn't ask us to be easy people, educated people when they have not come to school. And on that day, what Baba did was to send Reverend Lawani to buy a form and, and send to me. So it was Baba Boy that bought me the form that I used to go to life. And when the old man had bought me a form, I don't have a choice but to go. Because if an old man buy you a form and you don't go, now you sabi. Many, many years later, when I was sent to worry to go and pastor the church, while they were sending my CV around, and they sent it to the council in uh, Bini District, the first question many of them were asking is, does he have a life qualification? And somebody said yes. And another person answered, where does he have time to go to life with his job? And they were calling around. Even I understand up to the time I was being selected for geo position, some people were still arguing that I didn't go to life. For your information to now hear it from the horse's mouth, I went to life. And I'm a graduate of life. Today, it's even a lot easier because we had during the NMC that Life Theological Seminary is going online by September this year. So for those who are busy, for those who are busy, you can take advantage of it. Even though before now we have had the executive program which very busy corporate executives have been availing themselves of. But the bottom line is that you need to be trained. You need to go for training. In theology, systematic theology, New and Old Testament survey, amenotics, and homiletics, which is my own favorite subject. You need to go for training. Even drivers are trained. How much more somebody who will handle the word of God? No wonder Paul the Apostle wrote to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Study to show yourself approved unto God. A man of God that needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth I went somewhere some time ago I went to a village evangelism and I have to worship in a church and the pastor of that church he was preaching and he said woe unto you Korazi you know there is something like that in the scripture and when he was going to explain it, he said, sure, you know that kerosene is always drying up. See, that's why they say go to kerosene. <laughs> there are so many people who are committed theological blunder because they are not trained. But the opportunity is there now to be trained so that you can be a better pastor and you can be a better leader. Number six, Ministry skills. 
The foundation for all other skills is preaching the gospel. One to one or from the pulpit. In Luke 21 verse 15, the Lord said, I will give you a mouth and a wisdom which none of your adversaries will be able to gainsay or resist. As regards our master Jesus, in Matthew 4 23 we are told, and Jesus went about Galilee teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sicknesses and diseases among the people preaching and teaching are the foundational ministry that we are called into but we need to acquire skills in this area there are other ministry skills that we need how to minister baptism in the Holy Spirit how to make disciples how to disciple others counseling skills communication skills deliverance and the rest all these are ministry skills that every man of God or every woman of God must surely avail themselves of if they want to be better so that you will not behave like disciples of Jesus who they brought that demon possessed to and the man was so sure they have been with Jesus so they should be able to cast the evil spirit out but lo and behold they could not cast him out but Jesus casted out the evil spirit and they now went to him in secret master can't, why can we not cast him out and he answered them the answer to that question is capacity. You cannot go beyond your capacity. What you don't know, you don't know. And it remains your senior. That's why it's good to learn. In Hosea chapter 4 verse 6, he said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. You need knowledge. You know, I used to share this testimony when I bought my first Mercedes Benz car, 200 in those days. It was raining. And I was to take it to church for the first time. You know how we park in Lagos, bumper to bumper. So I was going to reverse out of my premises. And I never driven a Mercedes Benz car before. So each time I engage the gear, the car go forward. Each time I engage the gear, the car moves forward. And I started talking, speaking in my heart, how can a car that has just been bought have a problem? But God was merciful to me. One of my members sent his son to come and give me an urgent message before I leave for church. And the boy came in a white Mercedes Benz car. And when he saw my Benz, he said, ah, pastor, congratulations. You have a new Benz car? I said, yes, yes. I said, but I don't know what's wrong with the car. And the young man said, pastor, please come down. What do you want to do? I said, I want to pull it out. He said, come down. Let me help you. And I came out of the car and in a jiffy, just the pam, pam, and the car moved back. I said, stop, stop. What did you do? What did you do? This car that I've been struggling with. He now told me, he said, the reverse gear of the Mercedes-Benz car is in the front. Me, I was putting it at the back. Because that's where the reverse gear of every other car is. You see, ignorance. It can kill. Even not that God was merciful to me. People were waiting for me in the church. And I wanted to go with that car. To go and show them that God has blessed me. Whatever you don't know is your senior. And there's only one time to learn. Once you know it, you have known it. Some people are shy to ask. They say, how will they know that I don't know? But then your ignorance will stay with you forever. And the day you will need that knowledge, you will look for it, you won't find it again. So all these skills that I've enumerated, they are important for you if you are going to build capacity for ministry, and for relevance. One, personal management skill. 
skills. You need to manage yourself so that you are not like Moses, who as a result of anger and lack of self-control lost the promised land. Number two, interpersonal and relational skills so that you can know how to relate with different kind of people. And you will not be bossy and you know what people want. People want to be appreciated. They want to be heard. People want to be recognized. People want to be encouraged. Number three, motivational or vision casting skills. You need to cast the vision of where you are taking your team to. You are a pastor. Where are we going? Every year you must, you must set make it known to the people. That's why Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2. Write the vision. Make it plain upon the people, upon the table. That he may run that read it. If you don't have a vision of where you are going, it means you are going nowhere. Like one of my mentors told me many, many years ago, to live without a goal or a vision is to live like a goat. May you not live like a goat in Jesus' name. So you need to have motivational or vision cast this case because people follow vision, they don't follow leaders. Team building skills because you will always have teams that you have to work with. Prayer support teams, praise worship teams, worship service team, evangelism outreach, follow up teams, Christian education team, and all the like. You must know how to build a team. Don't create division within your team. Otherwise, you will not get your desired result. Theological skills, the Bible school is there for you to go. And going online from September becomes easier. Ministry skills, I've mentioned their preaching and teaching skills. Ministering baptism of the Holy Spirit. Ministering healing and deliverance. Making disciples, counseling skills, communication skills, and deliverance skills. I pray for you that you will build capacity in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will turn your raw gifts and your raw talents into skills and expertise in the mighty name of Jesus. Very quickly, I move to the second part of the paper. And that's talking about remaining relevant. This has to do with timing. He said, provide me now. Many ministers have gone into extinction. They have expired because they are not inspired. They are outdated because they are not updated. They are not in the flow because they are not in the know. The world and its environment are changing every day. We're told that the changes expected in the world in the next five years, five to ten years, will be more than the changes we have seen in the last 100 years. There are fresh challenges and new approaches to life, business, and ministry. And those who cannot cope or cannot keep pace with the changes become irrelevant. But you will not become irrelevant in Jesus' name. Indeed, in view of the dynamism in the world and our environment with new things coming up every time and every day fresh challenges and new approaches to things it is necessary that a man or a woman of God must continue to do two things but before I tell you about those two things you must continue to do to remain relevant I'd like to share the story of the Swiss watchmakers with you. About the year 1967, the Swiss watchmakers were approached by the by Seiko, the quartz watchmaker from Japan. And they introduced to them a new way of producing wristwatches. And the Swiss watchmakers laughed at them. Because they felt that they were young. What do they know about making these watches? We have been in this business for years. What new thing can you teach us? That's what gets people updated. The best way to be updated is to learn new things. So, after some time, Seiko left them and went away and continued to do their work. 
In less than 10 years, Seiko has taken over the wristwatch market completely. And the switch watchmakers were thrown into oblivion. That's what happened for somebody who refused to update. So we have been doing this thing for years. When did they start? They cannot meet us. If you don't update, they will not only meet you, they will surpass you. But that will not be your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. So for you to remain relevant, two things you must do. Number one, you must remain within purpose. For everyone he called, he gave a purpose. You must remain within your purpose. There's a God or them purpose for you. Keep it up. Keep to it. Are you called to be a children pastor? Are you called to be a Christian education minister? Are you called to be a music minister? Are you called to be an intercessor? What is the calling of God upon your life? Keep to it. Keep to it. It is better to be the best and the only original than to be the photocopy of somebody else. It is better to be unique in your ministry. Keep to it. What has he called you to do? For everyone he called, they kept to their purpose. Even Jesus, the Son of God. 1 John 3, 8b. For this purpose was the Son of God manifested. That he might destroy the works of the devil. What has he called you to do? That's the first question you need to answer. And if you must remain relevant, you must remain within that purpose. What is the purpose of your calling? Concerning Jesus, Acts 10, 38. Our God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And when they were doing good, he knew all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. He remained within his call. He remained within purpose. You know, I was sharing a story with our inducted pastors. How one of my sons in the Lord, he was called to be a children pastor. And he came to his ministry. Well, after some time, because of some challenges of life, we God has taken him over by now. They have all become testimonies. His parents brought him to my office. And they said, in this your church, don't you promote people? This man has been pastoring children for these years. Is it not time to promote him to pastor adults? And I began to laugh. They said, no, 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 no. By now, he should have been promoted to be pastoring adults. So we want to appeal to you. When you are doing the next promotion, promote him to adult church. To be pastoring adults. He has pastored children enough. There are people that have been called to be teachers. But they want to be evangelists. There are people who are called to be evangelists. They want to be teachers. There are people who are called to pastor. They want to switch roles. What has he called you to do? Remain within your purpose. Everyone he called. He gave a purpose. Be unique. And pursue your uniqueness. Everyone he called, he gave a purpose. Moses was to deliver Israel. Joshua was given a different purpose. He was to divide the land. Everyone he called, he gave a purpose. Even Paul was sent to kings and to Gentiles. In Acts 9.15, what is your purpose? What is your unique calling? Don't be a photocopy. Be an original. One day the Lord was speaking to me and he told me, he said, son, it is wrong for you to begin to pursue the areas where you're not too good. He said, because you will end up being an average minister. He said, stay within your area of strength and be known for something. I was asking our inducted ministers, I said, when they announced the name of Pastor Nathaniel Bassi, as one of the ministers going to minister during the national convention this year. What came to your mind? Eh? What came to your mind about Nathaniel Bassi? Music. You know that's even if they put his name and they put it along with uh, Dr. Paul Enenche and Bishop Frank, you already know that there is no way Nathaniel Bassi will come here and he will start preaching. Because music is his calling. But there are people who have been called to be prayer warriors, intercessors, and they are struggling with the pulpit. 
Many years ago, I had the story of these two men that were called into ministry. One was called actually, so he called the other one to partner with him. And the Lord gave the other man specific assignment. Your job is to intercede for this ministry, for its success. And before you knew it, he kept to that assignment and he, he raised a strong prayer team for that ministry. And the ministry was doing very well. The ministry used to hold citywide crusades in stadiums all over the country. Stadiums all over the country. And people went to this man and they entered into him. They said, are you not a mumu? How can you be in prayer room? Your colleague is traveling all over the world. He's receiving all the accolades. You too, you are supposed to be going all over. But now, uh -uh. is it only prayer? And you to ask him to get somebody else to go to prayer room. You to come out. And he listened to the voice of man. And he went and met the other man and said, Sir, I think we will be alternating now. You too, you have to be going to prayer room. And the man told him, he said, well, sure you know, I received the call. I invited you. So if that is the case, I think we can part ways. They parted ways. Till today, I never heard of that man again. The other man kept on growing and growing. You will not miss your purpose in Jesus' name. Number one, remain within purpose. Number two, develop yourself continually. Develop yourself continually. After this training, go for the next training. After the next training, go for the next training. To remain perpetually relevant, self-development is critical to self-preservation. Daniel was relevant to three different regimes because of his unique skills. Even the queen's mother recommended him. A golden fish has no hiding place. Be a solution to this generation's problem and you'll be continually relevant. It is the claim for continuous relevance that has brought us to building capacity and acquiring skills that are relevant for life and ministry, which is our focus in this conference. What has he called you to do? I ask you again. One of my favorite scriptures as I round up this message is First King chapter 20, verse 39. Very pathetic story, but it's a story that is common to people today. First King 20, verse 39. And as the king passed by, he cried unto the king, and he said, Your servant went into the midst of the battle, and behold, a man turned aside and brought a man unto me and said, Keep this man, he by enemies. He be missing, then shall your life be for his life, or else you shall pay a price. Verse 40. But when your servant was looking here and there, who sent him to look here and there? What was the instruction to him? Keep this man. But he was looking here and there. See, so while I was looking here and there, the man escaped and went away and they told him you know the judgment yourself because the rules were clear keep this man if he escapes your life will go for it or else you pay i pray for you you will not pay for what jesus has paid for again you will remain within the purpose for which god has called you you will continually develop yourself so that where you are Last year is not where you will be today. And where you will be today is not where you will be tomorrow. Continuous self-improvement. When you stop growing, you start dying. When you stop learning, you start dying. So you must not only remain within purpose, you must always be current. You must have the latest because people like new things. I've shared the story of the two-story building in Benin which my friend Reverend Samos shared with me many years ago. The first story building in Benin. The entire Benin city gathered around it. Come and see the wonder of a building on top of another building. And all of them gathered and they were celebrating it. But after some months somebody tried two stories. 
and he put two buildings on top of ground floor. And all the people who are following the man who had one story before, they relocated to the two stories. So there's the wonder of two stories on top of one building. I pray for you, may you remain within purpose. May you continuously develop yourself so that you will not become irrelevant, so that you will not become outdated, and so that you will not become expired. Building capacity for relevance. As I round it up, what has he called you to do? David was called to fulfill purpose, and he did. Psalm 78, verse 70. He chose David also, his servant, and took him from the sheepfold to feed Jacob, his people, and Israel, his inheritance. And he did it with the integrity of his heart and with the skillfulness of his hand. I pray for you. You will fulfill purpose. You will fulfill purpose on a continuous basis. And you will develop yourself on a continuous basis so that you will build capacity and remain relevant till eternity rise up on your feet and let us pray we cannot do without you we cannot do without you we cannot do without you oh lord yes oh lord we cannot do without you we cannot do without you we cannot do without you oh lord do something new do something new in our lives something new in our lives do something new in our lives oh lord Yes, oh Lord, do something new in our lives. Oh, something new in our lives. Do something new in our lives. Oh Lord. I want you to open your mouth and pray for yourself and say, Oh Lord, oh Lord, I will not miss your purpose for my life. I will not miss your purpose for my life. Open your mouth and pray for your side. I won't miss your purpose for my ministry. I will not miss your purpose for my life. I will remain within purpose. In the name of Jesus Christ. I shall remain within purpose. I will not miss your purpose. I will not miss your purpose. In the name of Jesus. I shall remain within purpose. In the mighty name of Jesus. I shall remain within purpose. I will not miss your purpose. In the mighty name of Jesus. I shall not miss your purpose in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. I want to pray for some people tonight. You are there. You cannot even answer that question. What is your purpose in ministry? You cannot answer it. You can't answer it. And that's the starting point. Because if purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. What's your purpose in ministry? What has he called you to do? You must clear it. What has he called you to do? So that you can know in what area you have to continue to build capacity. And develop yourself. If you are there tonight, and you believe that before you leave this camp, this week, God will show you clearly the purpose for which he has called you. I want to pray for you. Anywhere you are, I want you to rush to the altar. Just rush to the altar. And say between now and the end of this program on Friday, I want to receive clearly what he has called me to do. Not what they force you to be doing. Not what you saw your brother do or your friend do and you join them in doing. And since then you've been roaming about. You don't have a clear plan. You don't have you don't, you don't, you don't, you have not discovered who he has called you to be. What has he called you to do? Please come, come, come quickly because my time is, is running out. If you are going to join them, please join them, join them, join them. And as you reach the altar, begin to pray for yourself. Ask God to reveal to you 
who he has made you from the foundation of the world joseph was given a dream that came to pass 17 years after or 30 years after but god revealed to him he said i will stand upon my watch and wait to see what he will say to me and he said write the vision make it plain upon the table that he may run that reader is for the vision is for an appointed time what has he called you to do what has he called you to do that may be the reason for your inefficiency that may be the reason for your lack of capacity because you don't even know the direction in which you should build capacity what has he called you to do begin to ask god say father before i leave this camp on saturday you must reveal to me clearly what you have called me to do when he called Moses, he told him in clear terms Exodus chapter 3 verse 12 you will worship me on this mountain after you have brought out the people when he called Joshua he said Joshua you will take the people to cross Jordan and you are going to divide the land for all the people that's the only way to go if you are not clear how can you know which way to go talk to the Lord talk to the Lord if he has called you into a purpose he will equip you for that purpose if he has called you to an assignment he will equip you for that assignment are you called to be an evangelist are you called to be a pastor are you called into the intercessory ministry are you called into the children ministry what has he called you to do what has he called you to do In Jesus name we have prayer I want you to lift your two hands to heaven father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ thank you for this your people you are a God of purpose you created them for a purpose as instruments in your hand and as builders together with you in your house I ask tonight that between now and the time they will leave this camp may declare to them the purpose for which you have called them in the name of the lord jesus christ good there's a general calling for everybody but there's a specific call there's a specific purpose i pray for you before you leave this camp it will be clear to you in the name of the lord jesus i pray for everyone under the sound of my voice may you remain within purpose in the name of jesus May you develop yourself continually in the name of Jesus. You will not fail in the name of Jesus. You will not falter in the name of Jesus. You will grow from strength to strength. You will grow from glory to glory. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you Father because you have had our prayers. For in Jesus name we have prayed. Put your hands together for the Lord. Follow, follow evangelists. So that he can, he can cancel you. And... Um, take some information from you down put your hands together for the lord jesus christ amen glory to god